Hi guys. Okay, so what this video is about is um, building a, a very low cost um, SMT oven for reflow soldering um, surface mount printed circuit boards. And um, this will be temperature controlled um, to the correct curve for the for the specification of the solder paste um, to to properly reflow solder um, surface mount printed circuit boards. So um, to do this cheaply, um, I'm starting out with the same oven that a lot of guys start out with. It's uh, made by Black and Decker, and it's a toaster oven, and it's Model number T0, I, I think that stands for toaster oven, 1356SG. And they're pretty low cost. You can shop around online until you find a, a sale or a good price. I happen to find this one for 20 bucks. So um, it's got a top and a bottom heating element and all the mechanical controls which most of those we're getting rid of anyway so anyway I'll uh, show you how we can do this cheaply and still have a good quality um, oven so let's get started here I'm gonna reposition the camera so you can see what's going on okay so um, this is the Black & Decker toaster oven and uh, has a glass front. Um, the door opens this way. So um, I've already taken the cover off. I've taken the controls out and to keep the cost down I've seen you know some guys um, build these where you have to plug it into the wall to turn it on. And some guys have added a, a power switch, but this oven comes with a, a, a switch that lets you select broil or toast or, you know, as for basically four selections. Well, you can use that same switch. I, I moved it from the, the middle position, which was right here, down to the bottom position and that's my on off switch now so just ohm that out until you find the contacts that can turn the whole thing on off and on and run your AC power through that so that's one uh, money saving tip you know get your power switch from things that are already here <laughs> um, as far as the um, temperature control and the timer those can be removed and and those won't be used in this build project okay so um, they're just screws that hold the cover on so you take that cover off and I also removed the four screws in the back plate and the one on the bottom so that I could get this back piece off because I want to have access from the back um, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, line part of this interior of the box with um, ceramic and all I use are just ceramic tiles these are um, 12 by 12 ceramic tiles that you get at any home store um, I looked it up online they're like 60 cents a piece right now or I think I these I had left over from a project that I did before and I think I paid a dollar for these but anyway they're they're pretty reasonable and then um, if you have a wet tile saw that is probably the best way I don't have one of those so I, I use the score and and break method so to break them into the sizes we need so um, let's just get start oh I wanted to tell talk about the what we're using for the sealant and this is I 
get it into view here. This is a high temperature silicone sealant and I picked this up at Menards. It's uh, it's the red um, silicone sealant, high temp silicone sealant and good up to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, this is made by, let's see if I can find that on here. Yeah, it says M-E-E-C-O's M-E-E-C-O's Red Devil is what it says on here. So, um, it's used for you know, high temperature things like um, vent, vent pipes and stuff like that. So, anyway, um, you can get it in these caulking tubes. I think I paid eight bucks for this whole caulking tube of this. So we're going to need some of that. And then I cut the ceramic tiles into a piece that fits in the bottom and a piece that fits on the back, the very back of the oven. And those will go inside the oven. Um, we don't want to put anything on the inside left and right side because the left and right side have um, grooves for a tray and we still want to maintain those grooves for the tray. They're enclosed grooves so they're not in this particular oven they're not open so no hot air can escape through them but it's nice to be able to put the tray to hold the boards on um, slide it into those grooves. Okay, so uh, the, the, I think the first thing we'll do is just open this uh, silicone sealant tube and put some inside and glue the ceramic down. So I measured the, the sizes I need. The bottom is going to be 10 and 3 quarter by seven and five sixteenths and the back piece is ten and three quarter by six so I have those two pieces cut and and I'll start by gluing those in and this is kind of the first thing to get done because this silicone to, you know can take up to 24 hours to fully cure so we want to get this taken care of and in fact, in this build, um, you know, I'll, I'll probably put it all together. But I don't even, I have ordered a bunch of parts, but I don't have them yet. So I'm getting started on what I can do now. Okay, so I've got the tip cut off for the caulking gun with my high temp silicone. I've got my rubber gloves on. I've got some paper towels handy. And so this is the bottom um, piece of ceramic tile and I'm just going to put some of this high temp sealant and just basically glue it um, onto the perimeter um, bottom edges. So now I'm going to put this piece of ceramic into the bottom of the oven and just glue it down into the bottom of the oven. So it goes under the heating element and it slides in until it so it fits into that recessed area and I know you guys can't see that so 
and just take care of a little bit of excess I got on here. Press that down in place and then I'll turn it around so you can maybe you can see it. Or maybe I'll just tip it up so that oh I I put a rubber band on a piece of tape to hold the door shut so I don't have to worry about that. So can you see the ceramic in there on the bottom under the heating element? Glued in. So okay, so that's the Oops. Okay, now. <laughs> I had it slide on me, so. Make sure that's still good. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So that's the the bottom piece. Now this is the the back of the um, back of the oven, and they do have a kind of a dished out place here. I think that's so that you can actually fit a small pizza in in this oven. So that's a little bit of a dent and also it leaves room if you have a a tray for some of the some of the heat to come up from below to the top but we're going to just put a flat piece of ceramic on there and then we're going to when we make our our tray for our PC boards we're going to make sure that there's a gap between the back edge of the tray and this piece of ceramic that we have glued on there. So, um, this is my piece for the back. So, let's put some silicone on that and glue that into place. So, always remember when you're done siliconing to back that plunger off so that it doesn't keep squirting out. marks with a uh, felt tip pen where the corners will be and this won't go all the way to the bottom of this part because once you put this back cover on um, you have to have room for that there's there's a neutral wire that goes through a little recess or, or you know where the metal's bent a little bit there so make sure you leave that um, up off the bottom so that it that's why I put these marks here so I knew where where to glue it in so 
got to have space here for that neutral. So I'm, I'm pressing it down, trying to get it stuck really well. Kind of wiggle it around a little bit. Centered. Okay, is that in the shot? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna set this. Um, I'm gonna get some blocks to put under here so that it stays level, and probably just let this dry for. Overnight or a couple nights actually would be good. So so there we go. So that takes care of the bottom and the back. Um, the sides. We're not going to put ceramic inside because, like I said before, the the tray, the little groove for the tray is, is there. So I'm either going to put ceramic on the outside or, or insulate the, the sides in another way. And then I think I'll put a piece of ceramic on the top of the whole thing before the... There's a top cover that will cover all this up. You know this cover goes over everything, but uh, yeah. So um, also when we when I do all the when I get this put start putting back together. I'll be sealing up all these holes and seams with this high temperature silicone adhesive also, but I'm going to wait until some of this dries enough to where I can start reassembling. Okay, so I have the ceramic on the inside um, glued on with the, this uh, high temperature silicone adhesive and I put the back back on and then I've got the bottom propped up in the front and I have the, the glass door held open with a rubber band and then I put masking tape around the perimeter where I don't want any adhesive to go. I'm going to make a homemade gasket with silicone, high temp silicone. So um, the next step I want to do is get a piece of wax paper and cover the inside of the door with wax paper so that the adhesive won't stick to the, to the glass. So I'm just going to tape this just on the, use the edge of the edge of the wax paper and just tape it to the glass. surface okay. 
ね。Pretty good. So, just、uh, put a bead of this silicone sealant on the as a seal for the glass door. Also, mask off the place where I don't want any sealant to go. So, on the outside of the Carefully close the door. Okay, so the sealer has had a chance to dry overnight, so let's see if the door opens. Peel the masking tape off. The door, and there we go. Opens right up. Now you just carefully take this wax paper off. Seal. Okay, I got this piece of quarter inch,、uh, I think it's quarter inch by three inch、uh, aluminum, piece of aluminum for the heat sink for the solid state relays. And I'm going to cut it off where that line is so I can mount three relays. Not that these、uh, solid state relays are going to need very much heat sink. They're, they're rated at 40 amps each, and I don't know, probably be drawn about maybe 7 amps or something. So, <laughs> plenty of、uh, 
leeway for <laughs> for them to continue to work. So, all right. So go out to the shop and get the aluminum cut off and trued up. Okay, let's cut this metal plate off. Okay, so I've already glued the ceramic tile to the inside bottom and inside back of the oven, also to the outside left and right sides, and um, now I'm ready to glue the ceramic tile to the top, um, which is going on the outside. Um, the inside is so close to the heating element, it just and plus it would have to be small you know just this size if I glued it on the inside so I decided to go ahead and and glue it to the outside um, just to give some insulating properties so so here we go I'm just gonna to try. I'm leaving it not all the way up to the edge because I need a gap here to get the top cover back on. So and I'm going to try and center it. Okay so right there looks good. I'm going to press this down and 
move it around a little bit here. Okay, so there we go. That's gonna be it for the for the ceramic tiles. So we'll let that dry and then uh, start working on the electronic controls. I did. Um, I think I already you probably already saw the video where I um, cut this plate out for the solid state relays. These are 40 amp relays, so a little overkill, but I had them in my stock, so. <laughs> okay, so I've got all the uh, ceramic attached, ceramic tiles attached to the oven. So now I'm working on the um, solid state relays and putting these onto a heat sink. So first thing I take some thermal compound and put apply some to the back of these um, solid state relays. And then I'll attach them with screws to the heat sink. These are some relays I had in my stock, so they're actually 40 amp, which is way overkill for this project, but since I had them in stock, I just decided to use these. So I've already tapped the, drilled and tapped the holes in the aluminum plate for to work as a heat sink. So there we go. Got two attached, one left. Some people use a sill pad or some other type of thermal conducting material um, to transfer the heat to the aluminum. And that's fine if you have that or want to use that. But this is this stuff's kind of messy but it works really well. So.
Okay. There we go. This is thermal compound part number 120-8 by Wakefield. Okay, so I have the oven tipped up on the end so um, you can see what I'm doing here. Um, this, I have the three solid state relays mounted to the heat sink and I have some little L brackets that are attached to the heat sink and then screwed to the bottom of the of the oven. So next what I'm going to do is wire up the the high voltage well, and the low voltage too but I'm starting out with the high voltage. So what I have is I've mounted a, a little power supply, 5 volt power supply with a cable tie to the back and my power coming in is right here this is the hot coming in on this orange wire goes to the switch out of the switch goes will go to the three solid state relays and then to the power supply so let's get these solid state relays wired up So this is 120 volts. Sure, these are tight. Okay. Okay, so that's our our hot side, the the neutral comes in, just goes to the power supply and also back to the other side of the heating elements. So, and now our heating elements um, have 
this one taped up here, so let's take the tape off of that. So this is the bottom heating element. I'll put it in the middle. To the middle relay. Top one will connect to the this back relay. If I need to add a, another heating element, then I I have the relay that I can um, connect the bottom heating element to a second bottom heating element. That is. I'm going to take a look at the profile, see how long it takes to heat up like this, and then I'll decide whether we need to add a, another heating element. <clears throat> okay, so that takes care of the high voltage wiring. And low voltage wiring will want positive going to the plus side of all these relays so this brown will be our positive Just daisy chains along to all the positives. Yeah, and connect our control wires to the negative side of the of the solid state relay control. Okay, that takes care of the 
Solid state relay wiring. Just run all these through the, the hole. Put some wire protection and some wire ties on that later. So there we go. We got the wiring done, except to the control, which I don't have yet. <laughs>